What's up, everybody? We are getting ready for NXT TakeOver tonight. I am damn excited, man. I'm ready for this. Uh, my NXT predictions video is on its way, but real quick, while I'm getting that recorded, I wanted to throw out there this information about Kevin Owens. Uh, before I get to the Kevin Owens news, let me also throw out there that uh, there is a rumor of new tag team title belts with removable plates or potentially a complete redesign of tag team championships. Um, there is no 100% certainty if these uh, tag team belts will debut at WrestleMania or if they will debut on Raw and SmackDown the following WrestleMania or, um, or what. But the thing we do know is that the belts apparently, allegedly, are on hand at WrestleMania. So we don't know that, but we, you know, from what we're hearing, it's not being denied and it's being reported by different sources unrelated to each other that there are new tag team belts on the premises. We don't know if we'll see those tag team belts, but either way, if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe down below, hit the bell, all that stuff. Uh, Kevin Owens news, we'll get to that in a second. We have some new photos from MetLife Stadium. Um, I found these while looking on uh, the Wrestling Inc. website. They were reporting them from Instagram accounts. So there's one of the overheads. We've seen that one before. Here's uh, one of the stage. So this is a pretty damn big LED-looking circular screen above the ring. Man, look out for obstructed view if you're at MetLife Stadium. Jesus. Um, and then also this side view. Looks like a giant Titantron, maybe a giant LED Titantron over here. Uh, which could be pretty boring, you know, it, it, that could be boring, but hey, at nighttime, this could look like sick, it could look like eight Titantrons all come together, so if it's just this flat, huge flat screen, you know, we've sort of seen that before, but I don't know, this is unfinished, even the ramp isn't fully done here yet, so, you know, who knows, maybe it will look better uh, during the show, it seems a bit underwhelming to me so far, but maybe it won't be, uh, I feel like next year at Tampa, there's going to be this big pirate theme that, you know, we've never, you know, like maybe even like a pirate ship coming out with the logo and everything. Apparently they like to, they're trying to go with the Tampa Bay, uh, you know, vibe of the Buccaneers or something. You know, I don't know. Mojo Raleigh needs to figure it out. Uh, that being said, uh, the Kevin Owens stuff is, uh, interesting. He, uh, tweeted out. Now remember Kevin Owens going through this huge injury and the guy finally makes it back to the main roster. And uh, we thought there was going to be this big WrestleMania push with Kevin Owens. But then the whole Kofi Kingston thing happened. And it was kind of like, well, sorry, Owens. Shit, you know, we got to go with this, you know. And I don't blame them for that. Uh, but, you know, Owens tweets out uh, the following. And maybe this could even play into the storyline or something that it ends up doing. He was going to be this massive baby face, though. We got the reports that they were going to make Kevin Owens a massive baby face, like an everyday guy. He sucks at bowling. You know, he's trying to work out. He can't really do that. He's eating pizza like all of us. And uh, they were going to do this guy that was supposed to relate to all of us. And then all of a sudden, plans changed for WrestleMania out of nowhere. Uh, nobody's fault. And he just kind of got left out. Now, my problem with this whole thing is, why isn't there something else Kevin Owens can do at WrestleMania? Whether it's be a referee or do something, you know, I don't understand why there isn't something he could have done that would have been a setup for WrestleMania. Instead, they sort of just kind of like left him off. It's like you come back from injury and all of a sudden you become punished. The only person I've ever seen that like punished or sort not punished, but like take a huge step back when returning from a big injury is Ryback. I remember Ryback kind of came back from an injury and you're like, well, they always give people a bone when they come back from an injury. And they, man, they gave him a bone, man, and then they booted him out the door. Uh, Kevin Owens says, hi, everyone. Full disclosure, not being on Mania is gradually driving me more and more crazy. As the show gets closer, so my session at Access on Saturday should be a real blast. 10 a.m. noon. Come. Now, he might have done this also to get some press, right? So if he kind of complains a little bit, drive me crazy, he knows that's going to get press, but he also didn't bash anybody. He just said, it's drive me crazy. And then he promotes his session at 10 AM. So to me, that's to me, this, this tweet is actually good promotion to, to be honest. Like what a great idea. What great promotion. It's less of him because people are saying Owen's angry. Owen's, you know, upset and even just the driving him crazy line you know when you look at it I'm sure he's upset man he, he worked hard to come back from injury 
uh, to basically be a glorified celebrity while WrestleMania is going on, you know? And um, that's part of why I didn't go to WrestleMania, why I won't be at WrestleMania, is because I have a lot of bills piling up, guys, and, you know, it would have been a pay cut for me to come to WrestleMania. It would have been great to meet everybody and hang out with you guys like I've done before, but it would have been a huge pay cut for me to just play celebrity at WrestleMania and walk around and a few people would recognize me or something. Meanwhile, I, I lost money and I couldn't do the shows from my house like I need to. So uh, that's that's a big reason why, you know, I decided not to do that. But there you have it, guys. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also, I'm going to be doing my NXT review, but also want to shout you out. Patreon is on fire right now. If you're not a patron, think about becoming a patron. Uh, we need you guys to keep the show going. This is PBS, bro. You guys need to uh, support, but you also get 30 hours of bonus content if you're a $5 to $10 patron a month. Um, we got bonus talk that no one's heard yet. It's an hour long. Um, oh God, you know what? I uploaded the wrong thing. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh God. I just realized I uploaded the wrong, uh, audio clip and t-shirts be experience. Going so alleged. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry to everybody who heard that again. I have to re-upload the bonus talk. Oh, well, uh, Bailey and Cronin, me and me and Bailey talked for an hour about the new Joker. Uh, this is not the other one that we talked about. This is a brand new one. An hour about the new Joker uh, trailer. So huge podcast there. Episode 158 of Morning Madness, part two. Episode 157, part one. There's the re-upload of this. I this is the I can't believe I did that. Um, Morning Madness 157. There's so many things, man, uh, that that are on uh, Patreon. I alert you to all my videos. There's just so much stuff up here. Please uh, think about becoming a patron. And uh, to the patrons who are $25 and above, the people that are $25 and above, I got to give it to you guys uh, big time for the support. No, I mean, this is a crazy amount of support that you guys are uh, providing uh, for the channel. And uh, that being said, I want to uh, I want to shout out you guys, the beast. I'm going to be shouting out all the producers um, over the next couple days, uh, I'm hoping this is up to date right here. We got, um, Justin McNeil, who's the top patron, Gary Metzler, Mikey to crikey, big bad ads, Jacob, Gerald Armstrong, Nikki J, jabroni jabber podcast, frog kid, Ryan Pelletier, uh, steamy wet broccoli, Matt Gersey, a Wandy, Coop the Comedian, The Bear 1322, Broken Lion, Trey Hendrickson, CJ Bradley, and J.R. Ford the third. Um, and there may be somebody, a couple new guys who I didn't get to there, so I want to just make sure I shout them out. Guys, leave some comments down below and let me know what you think about this, uh, this news about WrestleMania as I work on my NXT um, predictions and preview. That's coming in a minute. Let me know what you think. And um, let's see who I missed. I got Big Matt. Oh, we got Arc uh, Arcnolia Strokel, Mr. Strokel. Thank you for becoming a twenty-five dollar patron. Uh, Frog Kid, we got him. Star Scream, yes, that's that's one of the new ones. Lewis, thank you, sir. Welcome back to the channel, man. And I, I want to thank Star Scream. For all he's done on the channel from 2000, back in 2013, 14, 15, I feel like. And then um, coming back at a $25 producer level. Thank you, sir. And uh, who else? We got Trey Hendrickson. We got, I think, uh, Ryan Pelletier. We got, and we, yeah, I think we got everybody there. I, I believe if I left you out, please let me know. I want to hear about it. And guys, I just want to say thank you so much again. And uh, Strokel Bean, thank you, sir. And look at that. He just can't figure it out, man. Will he ever figure it out? I don't know. I'm not sure. And then I, I looked. I wanted to stream the Diablo 3 PTR for all you Diablo fans today. But the PTR doesn't release until 7.30 or 8 p.m. tonight. So there goes that. Because I'll be watching NXT. And then I'll be doing monetize this as soon as NXT is over. So now I can't do the damn Diablo stream. Which is what I thought I'd be able to do during the day today. So that just pissed me off. Um, just absolutely pissed off about that. Really, really pissed off, actually. Um, but yeah, I really... Um, 
I hope you guys think about becoming producers on the show at the $25 or above Patreon level. It's a lot, a lot to ask. If you're a $10 patron, you guys get the VIP uh, gold discord uh, stuff. So make sure you hit me up for that. If you don't have it, please harass me about it. If you don't have it, um, whether it's by sending me a me remember, don't just post a comment on Patreon, message me directly on Patreon. And I, I think it's easier to do that on a desktop than it is on your phone on Patreon. So just remember that. But if you message me on Patreon, I should respond eventually at within 24 hours. Um, but if you're not getting a response, something's wrong. Please email me. Joe Cronin show at yahoo.com. Send me an email with in the subject line, like Patreon problem or Patreon question, Joe, something like that. I will respond to your emails if nothing else. Um, and then of course you guys can follow me on Instagram.com slash Joe Cronin show, Facebook.com slash Joe Cronin show, uh, Twitter at corrupted pod at corrupted POD. And, uh, tonight I will be live, uh, Possibly reacting. I may be live streaming a reaction to NXT TakeOver and then doing the review slash uh, monetize this tonight. We're going to have a battle royal on monetize this. That's going to be big. There's just so much stuff going on, man, that it's uh, <laughs> I can't even follow it. But I'm excited about it tonight. So we'll, we'll see you tonight for uh, NXT TakeOver usually because that's the night where it's just about the wrestling not so much the promos and storytelling that's what's supposed to get you there so when they rely on the in-ring work most of the performers do their job well unfortunately you just don't have a vested interest in these people you don't have a reason to root for or care for many of them besides just liking them so hey, uh, and that's the thing now there's there's so many you know discrepancies and plot holes and issues i myself you know i'm all for chaos and disorder but when it comes to wrestlemania i like things to be laid out as as well as possible i mean this is supposed to be the you know the the ultimate show of shows this is what everybody looks forward to all year long and i feel like this year has been so as much as it was predetermined, it's been so thrown together at the same time. It's it's just jarring. It really is. And we've had more matches announced, I feel like, on Twitter than actually made official on TV. Yeah. And I, I know Twitter. it's the adapting way of social media. I, I understand that. But even then, the announcements on social media have been underwhelming. And, and as Tommy says, lackluster. It's been just disappointing to find out, oh, by the way. Well, let me, know, uh, so. let me take a call real quick. 213, what's up? What's up, Joe? What's up, baby? Holla if you hear me. It's Luis. Luis, what's up, Luis? Well, nothing much, huh? I'm wondering why John Cena has a match at WrestleMania. This dunce bucket shouldn't be anywhere near WrestleMania. He doesn't have a match yet, but he wants one. He doesn't have one yet, but he wa he wants one. We can't see God him, God forbid so. it's with The Undertaker. I mean, people are even teasing oh my that Herbie Helms said that he's facing Cena Sunday. You know, people are joking about it <laughs> now, but John Cena is, is you know, certainly touting this also. Cena gets in the ring and screams like, come out, Undertaker, again, and then Undertaker kills <laughs> him again. Dude, that would be hey, so I'm weird. for it. Another two minutes, you know, scuffle after a ten-minute walk down from Taker. Well, it'd be funny if he tombstoned him one and then said, next, try it again, I'll beat you in eight seconds. <laughs> hey, uh, can you guys hear the sounds yet? Yeah, we can. Okay, yeah. let me play a couple of these. Then. Give it a hell yeah! What's up? WrestleMania baby, here's an interesting question. What's your top ten favorite matches from the PPV? Also, hey, Tony Hook, a bro up with Kelly Kelly's number. Oh, man, uh, WrestleMania, here's an interesting question. Your top ten favorite matches at Fuck. WrestleMania. <laughs> let me pause the donations while we try to think of that out of the out of nowhere. Um, generated, generated. I really appreciate that. Um, I'll throw a That's couple so out there. Yeah. Uh, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, Macho Man, WrestleMania yep. three. Um, yep. I, I enjoyed Macho Man Hogan five. Um, Gold Dust and Piper always stands out for me. For that like, was fun. Ones. That was just such a as a young kid. That was so bizarre and out there and exciting. That that always stands out. You know, like the test of time in my mind. Michaels and Razor in the ladder match at ten. The Rock and yep. Stone Cold at 15 for me was another huge one that 
I I always yearly go back to watch. Sometimes so, multiple times I mean, a year. One of the best ones out of all these might one of them's got to be Stone Cold versus Bret at WrestleMania 13. That was oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's gonna be on my list. That was awesome. Uh, Bret and Shawn and the Iron Man. Yep, Bret and Shawn the Iron Man. Although it is a tougher match to watch when you really go back. It's so long, but it, it is really damn and masterful. So that's that that's a good one. It's on the list somewhere. Um, I think uh, TLC at Mania 17. Yep. Jericho versus William Regal opening WrestleMania. What that's was that, 17? A, yeah, that was 17. Yep. That, yeah. If you were making an opening matches, like top 5 or 10, that would be on there. And I remember thinking when they did that, I was like, oh, that's so great that they're they're back to like the opening match being this nice match, like Tito Santana's opening match at Mania 1, Tito Santana against Shawn Michaels Mania 7, Shawn Michaels versus... Um, Tatanka at nine. Who opened up eight? I think that was Shawn Michaels versus Tito Santana, actually. Seven yeah, was something else. So. But, yeah, th those sort of opening matches, Bret Hart and Owen Hart at WrestleMania 10 to open up Mania 10, that's another yeah, match. because Bret doing double duty that night, yeah. Yeah, there, there's those are definitely on the list. Uh, what else? Th there's more. We're just, it's, you know, thinking about it on the spot. It can be a little uh, weird. I mean, Hogan, there's... Uh, Hogan I like and The ben, Rock. I like that. Yep. Benoit Angle from 17. Um, that one was very good. Uh, Benoit, Triple H. And H Hogan and The Rock. Obviously. By the way, Hogan and The Rock is on there, but Hogan and The Rock is also on there because of the, a lot of the, the atmosphere, the crowd. Certainly the match wasn't like, wow, that match. Was... It's, the, it's the star power. Yeah, it yeah. was just, wow, that match became, the crowd was so hyped that <laughs> that, that match... was so electrifying that you'll never be able to recreate that. That was I'll... next level unbelievable. That will never happen, That's... maybe. That's kind of like why I like Hogan and Vince from 19, because it's just like, let's see yes. the two of them beat the shit out of each other. That was, I. that's one of my favorite as well. And maybe even Sean and Jericho. Jericho. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, yeah. oh, what about yeah. Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler? That's <laughs> the Cole uh, Miners. Oh, my God. That that went on for so long. Uh, that, I like, I, that dragged, in my mind, That that's like a four-hour match. I, I, would, I would go Edge and Flair at Mania, tw I mean, Edge and uh, Mick Foley at 22. Ooh, that's yep. good. Uh, Edge and Undertaker, Triple H. Yeah, that was a good one. Triple H. A lot of, take, a lot of the Taker matches in yeah, those. Yeah, Taker like, matches so. are kind of Taker versus Sean. I was Shawn. trying to originally stay away from the given somewhat, but I mean, well, I mean we already CM nailed Punk the given. Really good. Yeah, yeah we, I remember yeah. We, we were we were going back to watch that for the uh, retrospective, and uh, I forgot how good that was with him and Punk at twenty nine. You know what we should do is like write them all down and do like a elimination thing until we get to the best match ever or something. Ooh, but that would be real. <sighs> that would be. You know, there's been a lot said about me. A lot of lies. A lot of truths. But if there's one thing that you know about me, I always come back. I always come back for more. And when somebody else stinkies up the air, I always am there to unstinky it. <coughs> <laughs> but what's important is the connection that we have together. Despite the fact that there may be some accusations about me and little boys and other things. That doesn't change the connection that we have. It doesn't change what we share together. It doesn't change the love and the lust that we both have had for each other. In fact, it's only made it stronger. You know that. I know that. But do they know that? Of course not. <laughs> Some people say that I've lost my mind. That I'm... Not the man that they thought I was. But we all know that that's not true. If you search deep inside, you'll realize that I'm everything you wanted me to be. And you love that about me, don't you? You enjoy the better parts of me. Just like I enjoy the better parts of you. So when you're sitting at home, 
on this New Year's Eve, you're thinking, I love him. I love him so much. I believe him. And I can feel your passion from here. I can feel the power of our connection. Like Frosty the Snowman's penis in the heat of the night. You know who I am. And I know who you are. And you know what I've done. And I know what I've done. Anyway, have a good new year. I know I will. And I know in the end that you'll do the right thing. Because you know what's wrong and what's right. Just like I do. Ah! <laughs>